Okay, so weak fish. Um, every weak fish I've ever caught was bycatch for me fishing for fluke, including a couple of true tide runners back in the day when they actually came through this area. Uh, this year I've caught more weak fish than the past eight or nine years combined. So here I'm using a three quarter ounce spro with a nuclear chicken uh, five inch grub which is a new size not the six inch but the five inch um, yeah this was a couple of months ago when I was still trying to fluke to very little effect So, just popped out. Yeah, so you see that hook just popped out. Um, this fish I ended up releasing. I actually had my knife in my hand and I could not put it to this fish. Um, they were gone for so many years and, you know, they're just so pretty when they come up you know in the water. Um, yeah, the limit now I think is one per person. And I see a lot of catch and release weak fish, obviously, because right now they're the only game in town. Um, just please be gentle with these fish. It would be great if they make a comeback and we see those big, you know, 12, 13 pound tide runners in the spring again. Uh, that that was a amazing fishery. So anyway, here I'm land based. Uh, this was last week and my kayak needed some warranty repair so here I'm fishing with my cousin and I'm using a 3 16th ounce jig head with a 5 inch gulp jerk shad and this bait you know you can get a lot of vertical height when you're slack line popping it um, unfortunately all I'm catching is out of season fluke the rod I'm using is yeah. my cousin's uh, Daiwa Zillion Medium. But how is my rod bending, I believe it's a 7 foot 2 <laughs> rod. Um, it works nice. It's paired to a 2500 Stratic FK. And it's a pretty good setup for, you know, inshore beach fishing. And this guy seemed a little stunned. But he swam off, and shortly thereafter, my cousin hooks into a nice wiki. I mean, it's bending a little more. <laughs> and this is the one we end up cooking. Now, off camera, he blooded out in the surf. Son! And yeah, we watch a lot of sea money videos. <laughs> okay, um, this fish clean, scaled, and rinsed only in salt water. So I made a ice brine, which I featured in some of my other videos. Um, weak fish is pretty soft. So at no point did this touch um, fresh water. And then wrapped in paper towels, stuffed the body cavity with paper towels. And here I'm just rubbing a little olive oil all over the fish inside and out and heavily salting it down. Uh, most of the salt is not going to stay on the fish. And anytime you're roasting or grilling a whole fish, it takes a lot of salt, a lot, you know, triple, quadruple the amount of salt um, that you would use if it was just a piece of filet. I guarantee you it will not end up being over seasoned. All right, so I'm just stuffing the cavity with some thyme and lemon. Uh, this dish is kind of a Mediterranean-ish uh, roast fish. Um, all right, so here I'm just tying it up with some butcher's twine. And you don't want to tie it too tightly. Uh, Again, weak fish is very soft.
So what this allows you to do, um, in addition to providing some flavor, some aroma, is it allows you to stand the fish uh, up instead of lying on one side. So generally speaking, if you can avoid having to go flip the fish in the middle of cooking, you want to do that. And there I mopped up some salt pepper off the foil and this is how you want to roast it. Okay, so your oven should be preheated to 500, uh, maybe 475, depending on your oven. And now we're gonna prep the roasted vegetables. Uh, I'm just halving some shallots, uh, fennel bulbs. The fennel you don't want to cut too thin, you know, about quarter inch slices. Keep the root on so it holds together. And same thing with lemon slices. And finally we add just a few cherry tomatoes. And these we're gonna roast separately in a separate sheet pan. So they're gonna go on the lower rack while the fish is roasting. And then once the fish is done, we're gonna pop it in the top rack to get some color. This knife needs a serious sharpening. Um, as you see on the second lemon, I'm using the tip of the knife just to get the slices started. That's, uh, that's what you do when you have a dull knife. Alright, a few sprigs of thyme, uh, salt, pepper, and a good amount of extra virgin olive oil. And we're just going to toss it through, make sure all the vegetable is coated in oil uh, before dumping it on the sheet it pan. Alright, you pretty much want a single layer of vegetables. Uh, just kind of spread them out a little bit. These shallots will roast into really sweet um, little nuggets. The tomatoes, again, salt, pepper, and just dress with a little bit of olive oil. Uh, these are going to pop. And all the flavors work. Another thing you can do with the tomatoes is cover them with olive oil and just slow roast them like a 200, 185 degree oven. Uh, that's, that's really nice too, but in the interest of time, we're going to do it all at once. Alright, so you see the fish is standing up, oven is at 500 degrees, and I think I let it went for 10 minutes. Okay, and now I'm going to rotate the pan. You see the skin kind of puffed up. And it's getting nice and crispy. So rotate both trays. Um, I believe I pulled the fish after another six minutes. So oven temperatures are going to vary uh, the size of your fish. I ended up temping it at 135. That's the target temperature. Little over is okay, a little under is not. All right, so here I'm doing the vinaigrette, very simple. Uh, this is some tarragon that I'm roughly chopping. All right, that goes in the bowl. Here I'm using uh, just a piece of paper towel to anchor the bowl to the cutting board so it doesn't slide around when I'm making the vinaigrette. And okay, so the base of it is apple cider vinegar. Um, I ended up squeezing, I think, half a lemon juice into that as well. Uh, that's Dijon mustard, salt, pepper, and about half a tablespoon of sugar. The sugar is just to take the edge off the acid. All right, there's the lemon juice. Whisk that out. And I'm going about 80% grapeseed oil, very neutral, and then I finish it with extra virgin olive oil. 
your classic vinaigrette, the ratio between acid and oil is uh, 1 to 3. So you start with a really thin stream and then you can add um, the oil a little bit quicker and you're whisking the whole time. So give it a quick taste, a little bit more sugar and a pinch more salt. And here I'm just drizzling in a little bit of olive oil. If you use olive oil for the whole vinaigrette, it's going to taste um, like extra virgin olive oil. So, which is fine if that's what you want. The mustard just helps keep everything together. Um, it adds some nice flavor, but you're not going to taste the mustard. All right, so we hold sure. that in you reserve. That. That was shot perfectly. And then we're going to dress some daikon radish sprouts, one of my favorite garnish. Uh, they have like a peppery taste to them. And they just look nice. Yeah, you know, I'm going to make this platter the, really festive. Yeah, just a little bit of the stuff that's ready. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I think total roasting time at this point is about 16 minutes and the veg needs just a little bit more color. So here I'm temping the fish. You want to go in at a couple points at the thickest part of the fish. And I think this one went to about 140, which is fine. And carefully remove your butcher's twine. You know, don't poke any holes in that skin. All right, now that's the color you want on your veg. And that's pretty much it. We're ready to plate. Nice little fish platter here. You see these lemon uh, slices got nice and caramelized. Yeah, so the only color really missing from this dish is green. Um, that's where the daikon radish sprouts come in. You could use chervil, uh, baby parsley, but whatever you put on the plate, it should be edible and it should go with the flavors. Uh, all right, so just gently lay the fish down. There you go, that's definitely a weak fish. Um, this is optional. I like to drizzle some of the vinaigrette over the fish while it's warm, but if you want to retain that crispy skin, you would not do this. You would just serve the vinaigrette on the side. When the fish is warm, it's going to soak up some of that vinaigrette, and um, I, I think it tastes better. All right, so here's the sprouts coming down. Remember, these sprouts were dressed in a little bit of that vinaigrette, so. Oh, there's a still photo. Well, once again, my cousin, just an amazing job with the photography and the filming. Here just to show you what the flesh looks like. It really is a soft fish. I would say it's reminiscent of um, bluefish or mackerel, something like that. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's a really nice fish, but probably not among the top three local species. So anyway, if you like what you see, please subscribe.